In terms of the academic rigor of the program, I think, personally, this year has been the best that I've ever seen. All the kids in my study group are really on top of it. They're all kind of like nervous and freaking out and think we're all like tough graders. You know what they're going through, so you're like, don't stress out, it's gonna be okay, you're allowed to take a lunch break. This program was really important to, to me and, and what I'm doing now and, and socially. You know, like some of my best friends, most of my best friends, like, came from this program. You come in, like, everyone's quiet, you don't really know who to talk to. But as soon as, like, the first week's over, you already know everyone, you know everyone's face, you know everyone's name. I remember we had three or four orientations that day, and two more, like, the Monday after. It was really hectic, but it was also exciting because you were meeting so many new people all at once. I was nervous a little bit but I was primarily excited to, to make some new friends. I was adjusting, basically me adjusting into like a new lifestyle. I really didn't know what to expect. This was actually the first time I'd ever lived away from home for like a prolonged period of time. And instead of sitting in a classroom all day long, I had to like follow people all around, learn about all these new stuff that if I didn't come into, into this program, I would have not experienced or had contact with until probably college junior year or something like that. So I took tests that, that were basically like college tests and I've learned how college classes are like. Um, they're pretty busy. On um, a typical day they have lecture at 8 o'clock in the morning. I am the lecture counselor so every morning I get there uh, about 15 minutes before everybody else to meet with a lecturer and to introduce them to the group. We have a lot of interesting topics being presented by some very interesting people and uh, kind of wish that they could uh, be more awake for them. The morning lectures can be a pain waking up, but I think it's worth it because I've learned a lot from those lectures. And then they go to lab from 9.30 to 5, and on Tuesday and Thursdays they also have a seminar at night. Um, that's from 6.15 to 7.45. My seminar, Human Physiology, I've always wanted to become a doctor, so yeah, it really fits me. And like. I think we're the toughest seminar of them all because we had a midterm, we have a final presentation. Yeah, it's, they keep us going all the time. And then they have an eight minute oral at the very end. They have to turn in their research paper and this is all on the same topic. I have people come and give me stuff early to like to, you know, draft. The kids are, are full of questions, you know, they, so they ask me, you know, about physiology, about pathophysiology, things that I couldn't possibly know, you know, given my experience, um, but I, I try and I try and help them as much as I can, and then they come to me for other things. You know, they come to me when they have stubbed toes and sore throats and stomach aches. I love being a counselor because I get to be um, the tough guy, but also the nice guy. And I like being there for all the kids and also being their friend. On the first day, we split up into groups. Each counselor took a big group of students around, we got their Gator links, got their Gator One cards, and we took them to each one of their lab posts. We got them to introduce their lab posts, they know what they're doing. We start working here like, like four or five weeks in advance of when the program begins, and it takes us just about most of that time to find a lab for each and every kid. So we made sure that it was what they wanted, what the student wanted. I, I think almost every kid was matched up with their interest. After I found out that I got what I wanted, biomedical, and a very interesting topic. I was, I was really excited to start doing that work. A lot of them are really enthusiastic about their lab and just overall really happy. It's hard to describe how, how satisfying a feeling it is when you match a student with a lab and then you take them there and they come out and they say, wow, my lab's awesome! Oh, it's been awesome. I've been working the lab. I mean, it's been what I've been wanting to do since forever. Most of my kids love their labs. They were so excited to tell me all about it. They were just ecstatic about it, actually. Uh, the kids would come back, and they're just really excited to be in the labs they're working in. Uh, I didn't tell any of them beforehand, you know, what they would be doing, so uh, it was a bit of a, a surprise, I think. We had some clappers coming out of the room after their first lab visit. Honestly, I love it so much. Uh, we get exposed to everything. We just basically so, how's your lab going? And then they just go on about what's going on in their lab, what they're learning, how they're enjoying it, what, if there's problems, they tell me the problems. We have somebody that's working with Lopez. We have another one that's doing some groundbreaking research on uh, inflammatory cardiovascular disease. Uh, we have somebody doing research on Parkinson's disease and how exercise may improve uh, 
motor and cognitive functioning in that. Yeah, I'm Professor Van Dunn, um, and this is the Department of Biochemistry and Molecular Biology. Uh, this is one part of our laboratory where we do a lot of kinetic experiments where we're studying the activity of some enzymes that we have generated by recombinant DNA methods and we're comparing enzymes uh, from, from different sources and we're also creating mutations in proteins and then evaluating the effect of those mutations by, by studying kinetic properties. This summer's SSDP student is Tom Zhang. He's working on a project involving HIV protease, which has been a, one of the major targets in our laboratory. And he's, he's uh, looking at a particular mutation in one of the subtypes of HIV. They're well prepared to get involved in a project. What we have to do then is we have to spend a little bit of time training them in the specific details of the project that we projects that we work on. Well, I saw that it had a really hands-on approach and you actually got to be in the lab instead of other summer programs where you actually sat in a classroom where you learned instead of like having hands-on experience. By the end of a summer period here, you know, Tom is ready to talk about his project and talk about the the, uh, the overall problem of HIV infection and, and, and so forth. So. Um, it, I've really been impressed at what the students can accomplish. I worked with Dr. Bruce Gladden in physiology, and it was the first time I'd ever had to present a, a scientific presentation, and uh, it was a little nerve-wracking, but it was a good experience overall. The research I do has a, a lot of acoustic components. I work with acoustic communication and in sex, and also I look at uh, detection of hidden infestations of insects using uh, acoustic techniques. Uh, we have a project that is working with uh, fruit flies that are pests of fruit in Florida. And we are trying to develop better methods to control uh, these insects uh, without using pesticides. And uh, Mariella has been uh, studying uh, the vibrations that are produced and uh, we had a hypothesis for example that we could construct a, a synthetic vibration that would be of interest to the females and she was testing that hypothesis this summer. So far we've tested two frequencies, a synthetic frequency signal and right now we are currently testing the actual male call and so far we've seen through the results that the synthetic signal doesn't have as much as an effect as the actual real male call. I was originally uh, signed to be in a, in, a, uh, in a chemistry lab of some type, but one of the other members, one of the other students, was assigned to the Health Science Center here behind me, and they didn't really want to do that, and so we, we switched. And it was, as it turns out, that played a, a significant role in my future, in my future studies, in my future life. Really, my lab was right here in the Health Science Center, in uh, with a, a professor, Dr. Joe Gennaro, in the Department of Anatomy, and we were working on. He had been given a grant to try to develop an anti-snake venom shot or pill that could be used by soldiers in the field or other people in the field. And so uh, what the, the whole summer was really testing different doses on, on mice. I'm Greg Schultz. I'm a biochemist uh, and a University of Florida Research Foundation professor uh, in the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology and the Institute for Wound Research. My lab focuses broadly on the molecular and cellular regulation of wound healing, and that includes both wounds that heal with too much scar or create a fibrotic pathology, and other uh, end of that spectrum are chronic wounds that fail to heal uh, and progress to chronic open wounds. So this year, uh, Vishal Thumar uh, is our uh, summer science training program student, and Vishal is working on chronic wounds, and particularly he's uh, working on understanding the role of bacteria in causing wounds to fail to heal. Vishal's role is trying to understand how to 
optimize treatments for biofilms growing in chronic skin wounds to try to kill the biofilms as quickly and as effectively as we can without killing the wound cells. Visual will first began learning how to grow those biofilms and now is uh, finishing his uh, project this summer by testing the effects of various topical treatments on uh, killing the biofilms um, in the in vitro pig skin model. Um, I'm working with Dr. Schultz and I'm doing research with biofilms which is basically when bacteria form colonies they form this basically impenetrable barrier that's like a defense mechanism. Antibiotics can't penetrate that barrier so what we're trying to do is find out which types of treatments are most effective. I worked in Dr. Shaw's lab in the chemical engineering department uh, on a project about surfactants, so, uh, specifically surfactant coatings for uh, cotton fabric to make it uh, more breathable. I wanted to do something sort of along those lines and I discovered material science and that's what I graduated with. My name is Robert Cottle and I'm a professor in the uh, Department of Oral Surgery at the University of Florida College of Dentistry. Um, my lab is primarily focused on uh, pain research and uh, drug addiction research. Well, I, I, she gets to uh, help my student uh, dissect brains from rats and uh, she also gets to um, run protein analysis which uh, probably your average high school student doesn't get to do. It's, it's a fairly sophisticated assay. And I worked in Dr. Trotzen's lab, which was in the equine reproduction facility. Um, we were working with horse semen and seeing how you could better preserve it. I know it sounds funny, but it was real science and I still loved it. I think for me it helped, um, it helped me see what was good and what was bad in the lab. So then when I went to look for one in undergraduate school, I could better pick which one I would work best in. Anisha's working on part of Dr. Giovazzani's project. Uh, because he was interested in uh, orthopedics and that obviously is an orthopedic study. The idea of how you organize something, how you you know or organize a study, how you uh, schedule it, uh, all those sorts of things, and as well as all the techniques you use are, are unknown to him. And he probably learned as fast as anybody would on how to do that. And that's probably a pretty remarkable part of the whole project in that he picked that up relatively quickly. Well, in lab, uh, I actually have to clean uh, particles and I actually have to coat these particles by using the, the Lechmeyer Blushed method of coating. I'm working on a creating and making and purifying and characterizing polyhydroxyfullerenes, and then we're using those fullerenes to apply it to cancer research. We hope to oh, inject it into the tumor and then shoot it with the laser, causing the polyhydroxyfullerenes to make a little explosion and it will then kill the tumor cells. Well, HHMI stands for the Howard Hughes Medical Institute. And Howard Hughes, of course, was a, was a famous uh, engineer, industrialist, inventor, he basically made a fortune. He made billions and billions of dollars as, as, a, as an industrialist. And when he died, he didn't have any children, he didn't have any family. So his will donated the bulk of his estate to create the Howard Hughes Medical Institute. Part of that money is used to support uh, scientists at, at a very, very high level. And part of the money is used to support a program in science education. And we have an award from that part of the, of the Hughes Foundation to support our efforts to help students uh, in science learn about research and, and to present them with opportunities to do research. So I think this is probably the eighth or ninth year uh, I've had uh, an SSTP student in the laboratory. And I can tell you we're batting a thousand. In terms of classes and schoolwork, it just it helped me get more motivated uh, since, I was, since we were practically college students. It gave me my first taste of college. They also get a bit of experience in, in living uh, with other students in a dormitory setting, you know, away from home, so that's their first exposure to college life, basically. It made me realize that I wanted to go into medicine. 
think it taught me how to do research also. This will get their feet wet. They'll, they'll have an understanding of what it's like to discover something new and different. The, the SST program produces a, a fairly sophisticated student who's able to go on and succeed in, in many different environments. It showed that I was passionate about pursuing the career in science. Uh, right now I'm at USF. Freshmen never get the opportunity to research. Usually it's suggested that you do it in your sophomore year. But since I did SSTP, I spoke to a professor in the Center for Brain Repair and Aging. And I already have a position there where I'm basically working with stroke and using stem cells as a therapeutic uh, treatment. So I'm already like in the center of like a revolutionary topic and I could never have gotten that position of going through SSTP and showing my professor that I have the skill sets, I have the set of skills necessary to do this task. It gives them a tremendous opportunity, a unique opportunity to see uh, what laboratory research is like uh, and obviously there are multiple topics and multiple areas that uh, the SSTP program offers. We had a, a scientific seminar once a week while we were undergraduates where we take a scientific paper and read it and it's very hard the first time you read a scientific paper you've never been exposed to it takes a long time but having been in SSTP at least we had a little bit of exposure so it helped in that. It will probably put them in well ahead of anybody else that's interested in a science career as far as being able to write scientifically and to think in a manner that is organized and on a timeline so that he understands what planning and conducting research is like. Very few people understand that. But. I think the, the biggest challenge is really for them to understand uh, the process of science, that it isn't like CSI or, or any of the TV shows that you, know, you can't, can't do a DNA analysis in 30 minutes like you can on TV. Um, it takes you know, a couple weeks of work to get some very simple data. Uh, I do think it's important that students be able to see what goes on in research labs uh, and those people who are interested, uh, if the earlier they get an opportunity to do research, I, I think the better prepared they are once they get into college and graduate school. I'm going uh, to Rensselaer Polytechnic to pursue a PhD in material science because research is uh, something I want to do for the rest of my life now. Everything became easier in the future and it helped with the uh, things that I did in, in undergraduate and also in medical school. As a direct result of working for Dr. Wilson, I was offered a faculty scholarship to attend medical school here. I think it, like, getting into college even, um, just the fact that I had done such a long program, I think, showed a level of commitment that colleges like to see, especially when it's geared toward an academic program. We have uh, helped uh, several hundred students get into laboratories and do hands-on, uh, long-term uh, science research projects. When they come in the SSTP program, and they get in a laboratory at the university, they get to work with, with cutting edge equipment, the, the, the fanciest stuff that, that you can imagine, and they, they, get, they get a view of how things are done. I think it's an experience that everyone should have access to. It exposes all the high schoolers to sciences, and in America, you know, we're kind of falling behind in sciences, and we need to catch up to all the other countries, so it's really good. So the program directly was responsible for my eventual career, for my ability to get uh, summer work and scholarships, and eventually developing a very close association with the University of, uh, of Florida. It's just, it's that much different. It's what sets you apart from the rest, from everyone else. Throughout that, we had different, like we had ice cream socials, desserts, with, like cover dishes, dances. With SSTP, the counselors are kids like you in a way. Like they're only a couple years older, so they still get where you're coming from and they can better connect with you if you like. When I came here, I was like, wow, it's not only kids who want to learn science, it's like kids who know how to live, who have lives, like lively young teenagers who want to be doctors, scientists, and who had like the same interests as I did. 
that brought people together. Like, hey, this is what I like to do, and you like to do that too. Let's let's talk about it, and then let's talk about other things. So, like, I think a lot of those kids were grateful for the interact, you know, the opportunity to interact. The fact that they make us socialize is what I like about the program. It sounds ridiculous, but they make you be friends. And if otherwise they didn't do that, then I probably wouldn't have made the friends that I made so far. And like the friends that I've made here, I feel like I know them more as a family now that I'm here right now. And it was such a short time span. So I think it's working out well. I think they're getting to know each other, which is I, I think maybe as important as the academic component of the program. I think I got more outgoing. It, uh, you meet a lot of people from all over, um, have a lot of downtime, and uh, there were dances. <laughs> I think it was the best summer of my life up to that point, but also uh, it was the first time I'd ever been in love, and so... Uh, we met at a, like a pool party. Yeah, it was like maybe the first weekend or something. We talked about science, which is sort of hard to find outside. Not many people want to talk about science all the time, and he definitely did. We kept in touch after SSTP, uh, the February following, um, I asked her out. And Online. we've been... <laughs> <laughs> but it was very cute. And uh, we've been dating for four years now. The events that we do, the social events, like the dances, those were really fun. Uh, in terms of field trips, probably my favorite one was the Itchitakni River. And last Saturday we went to St. Augustine, we went to the Whitney Lab and got to play with little creatures that they had, we got to hold them, it was really cool. I think it was, you know, an opportunity for them to get to know each other when they're not being made to do anything specific. I don't think that you normally get the outlet for that much science, and this was a really nice conduit to just sort of let us be ourselves and not be ashamed of that. I've made 80 other friends. If I stayed at home, I wouldn't have enjoyed it as much as if I would have gone to SFTP. We were talking about it, we are like, we're gonna cry, we're going to fall in a deep depression. I'm happy and sad that the program is in here. I'm, I'm happy because I've been really tired and it's summer. I want to have a summer break. But I'm sad because, yeah, I have a lot of friends here and they really have to share the same interests as I do. Over the last six weeks, six, seven weeks, I've developed many great friendships. And the fact that I'm in lab six, seven hours, that's exactly what I wanted. I wanted to learn what what the research life is like and not only that but how college life is like and I think through SSTP I've definitely learned all that. I've been talking to a lot of the students here and the lab assistants, the med students, the undergrads and the grad students and they've been teaching me a lot about what they think and how they did things and how they made decisions about lab and their career or something like that. It helps you be more open-minded about different fields that you can consider going into when you go to college or in a career. This was probably the most productive and most fun summer that I've ever had. Like, I mean, I, most of my friends, they're going to the beach, they're going to theme parks. I mean, we've done that too, and we've also done so much more. I'm sure I'm going to go into science now for sure, and I'm pretty sure that I'm going to choose medical since I'm I'm taking a seminar here at SSTP as well, and it's helping me so much. My other friends who did go to the three-week program at Boston College or Penn State or Emory uh, College, they're saying how bad they don't like it, how there's about 600 students, and they don't have social socials like us. And they don't make friends as well as we do, so I really don't regret coming here. I love it. It was something that I've been wanting to do. I knew I was going to do something like this for my junior year summer break, but I didn't know it was going to be this good. I really enjoyed it. I really recommend it to other students since this is, this is one of the best experiences I've ever had. I think the SSTP program is a phenomenal opportunity for very motivated, uh, very intelligent uh, young men and women uh, in high school. We have to constantly mentor them during, during the summer process and I wish the summer period could be a lot longer. My goal is to uh, expose them to experiences that they will remember. They have to be willing to work really hard. This is not a vacation. This is an intense scientific exposure uh, to both uh, laboratory work as well as uh, classroom instruction. Being part of an environment with all those different people around uh, 
uh, a student, you know, just naturally is going to pick up uh, a lot of information about uh, about people at different stages in their in their lives, and and that gets them inspired and gets them them more committed to to go on and do well in their own life.